Hey, it's Dolly Mentry, and I'm back, baby. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that recently life gave me a whole bunch of lemons. So I've been busy making lemonade. I do want to thank all of you for your love, support, and especially your patience while things have slowed down on the channel. I really needed that time to center myself, but I have missed you all terribly. Now that my personal life has begun to stabilize, I'm a train wreck. I'm back with a full-length tutorial of how I created my twisted Disney character, Ariel. She, of course, is the iconic mermaid princess from the Disney classic, The Little Mermaid, released in 1989. Was that seriously that long ago? It doesn't really feel like it, and it is absolutely terrifying. But that's what Wikipedia says, so moving on. When I was coming up with her idea, I wanted to essentially capture this beautiful moment of her singing up towards the surface of the water, longing to be free and human before the true wrath of humanity strikes her, harpoon style. So if Ariel is a favorite of yours, it might be time to buckle yourself in for some nostalgic trauma. Let's do this. To begin, I started with this beautiful Serena Von Boo doll. I loved her tail, but straight away began hacking it off with some scissors. This doll had a lot of small alterations, including changing her arms and hands, cutting off little accents, and shaving down her body to create a seamless look for later. I cut the holes through her body for her harpoon wound, and I tested it. Next was super gluing all her joints and smoothing them out with some epoxy sculpt. Finally, her body was ready to begin the creation of her hips and tail. I wanted to experiment with new mediums and textures for this doll, and decided it was time to dip my toe into the world of resin. I sculpted the pieces from Sculpey first, and once they were ready, I popped my doll into the freezer to help them solidify before I could carefully remove them and bake them. I bought Pinkasil silicone putty from my local barns, a personal favorite place of mine to shop. I should also mention that this was my first time doing any sort of two-part silicon casting, as well as working with resin in general. I just wanted to show you how you can do it, even if you're an absolute novice like me. This stuff is so easy to use to create molds, as you simply mix even parts of part A and part B and cover the object that you would like to recast. It does only take a couple minutes to set though, so move fast. Once it's set, I carefully cut the mold and removed the sculpted piece. This left the hollow shape inside that I could then fill with resin. Then it was moving on to the actual resin itself. I just followed the instructions on the box. However, from my makeup history, I always follow the golden rule of initially mixing your mediums in one cup before transferring the mixture to a new cup. This can help to avoid uneven mixing and curing. When it came to the blood, I colored it using a couple drops of food coloring as I wanted a truly transparent color, and food coloring is awfully cheap and available everywhere. For the tail, I wanted less transparency and a little bit more body, so I did use some acrylic paints to color it. After I left them to fully cure, I could remove them from the molds. Then it was time to sand and buff them until they were completely smooth and ready to attach. Using a little hand drill, I drilled holes and used a wire to connect the tail and the fin together securely. The fins unfortunately warped somewhere along the way, but I knew I would be able to clean them up with some epoxy sculpt later. Don't forget that most miscalculations can be worked with, and that perfection should never be your goal. Doing your absolute best is always going to be better than being pedantic.
Once everything was blended smoothly and sanded down, I was excited to finally paint over her skin tone using some liquid acrylic paints and a sponge for a softer application. Acetone on a Q-tip helped me remove all that extra paint that had landed on those resin hips of hers. This left her tail ready to be painted after I added some simple shading to her skin tone. Her tail was painted with this really special glitter paint that took well over eight layers for a fully opaque coverage. Paints like these are worth the extra dry time and layers as it can create all sorts of interesting textures and dimensions as you build them up. I also added a few layers of Liquitex High Gloss just to give it an extra bit of shine. We could then paint her clam bra and the holes around her harpoon wound. To make the harpoon, I actually use an old paintbrush that I cut and sanded. I grabbed my bloody resin casts and cleaned them up with some Liquitex High Gloss and slid one into place on the harpoon. I could then push the harpoon through her body and attach the exit wound to the back. The ends of the harpoon were sculpted from epoxy sculpt and were sanded sharp once they had cured. After gluing the harpoon's rope into place, I could set her body aside for now while I moved on to her face. I had originally used this Frankie head for my Ariel doll, and halfway through her face up, I realized I just wasn't pushing her expression the way I had wanted to, especially after all of you wonderful people gave me so many tips and comments on my genie repaint. So I decided to scrap it and start fresh with this Spectra head. For her, I just had to apply a new skin tone and a red scalp before I could spray down three coats of Tester's Dull Coat. This time, I completely devoted myself to using every piece of advice given to me in my Genie Repaint video. I used multiple references, I studied eyebrows, face structures, and everything in between. It made an incredible difference and gave me the courage to keep pushing myself out of my comfort zone. The only thing I wasn't totally happy with was her mouth. Trying to open her lips slightly completely confused my brain for some reason. But how do you think I went? And what new tips do you guys have for me? Learning is the greatest gift we have to give. And this doll definitely helped me to learn more intense expressions, but also helped me to learn to really have fun with my ideas. Something else I had fun with was trying to come up with a new way to create the illusion of wet hair. I really wanted to freeze that moment in time, and I decided that creating normal yarn hair wefts and then coating them in Liquitex high gloss gel would be an awesome idea. I glued all the dried pieces into place, but halfway through I felt as though it would have been a little bit better to apply all the hair normally first and then go through and paint it all with that high gloss gel. With experiments like this one, even though I was able to work with it in the end, it does kind of just guide you in the right direction for your next doll repaint. So don't be scared to try new things, even if they don't turn out exactly like how you'd hope. So, if you have a better suggestion or idea, either let me know down in the comments or give it a go yourself and be sure to tag me on Instagram. Once her hair was on, it was time for more gloss, but this time on her face. Again, I really wanted to play with textures and finishes and this idea of her being underwater. So, I glossed her eyes, lips, and eyebrows with Liquitex High Gloss. I also subtly added a few glossy tears that you're only able to see once you move around her figurine. After popping her head onto her body, she just needed somewhere to chill, like an awesome coral reef diorama. Of course, if you've seen my Sculpey 101 video, you would have seen me create this coral reef from Sculpey Souffle. 
It was so relaxing and enjoyable to make, and I absolutely adore Sculpey, so make sure you check that video out. <laughs> to hold Ariel in place, I wanted something that wouldn't draw your attention. And I'd actually had some of these brush containers laying around that were plastic and clear and a little bit flimsy. So I actually filled them with some clear resin and left them to cure. This was honestly just a backyard type of idea that I came up with on the fly just to avoid having to buy something new specifically for it. So don't hold back, get creative and use whatever you have laying around your house. Once everything was down where I would like it, I used texture paste to cover it all and created waves in the sandy ocean floor. From here, I could fix my stands into place and get to painting. Once I had most of the basic painting done, I could glue down some real sand using the classic diorama method of alcohol and watered down Mod Podge. I added some more shading with some washes for depth and blending it all together. And I painted the edge of my base in purple, chosen by my lovely Patreons. Love you guys! Once majority of the base was finished, I could start adding the seaweed. Some people asked me to walk through this part slower, as you only got a quick taste of it in my Sculpey 101 video. It was as easy as rolling out multiple little tipped noodles of Sculpey in slightly different shades of green. They do end up very delicate, however, so make sure that you go slowly and handle them with care. Creating them on this Sculpey baking mat helped as I didn't have to scrape them off their surface prior to baking, which would have just smooshed them. This way I could just peel them away once they had baked and gently place them into position. The only big thing left was Ariel's little buddy Flounder. He started as some sort of other fish, an accessory from one of my other dolls. But I knew that looking at it, it could become the perfect Flounder with a few modifications. I used epoxy sculpt to change the style and design of my pink piranha and sanded it all smooth. Then I could start painting. This sort of plastic has a much more rubbery feel and can be so tricky to paint. You might be able to see just how rough the paint looked. However, I stuck it out. I was sure that a couple of coats of Liquitex high gloss varnish at the end would help smooth it all out. And of course I did give Flounder his own tears as he watches Ariel being harpooned out of nowhere. It felt necessary. Brutal, but necessary. Flounder could then be mounted into place and some last few bits of seaweed were added. 
This was the best feeling as I could pop Ariel onto her stand and secure her gravity defying harpoon rope using some super glue. By adding a little bit of super glue, once it dried, it left the rope stiff. This meant with a simple snip, Ariel was completely finished and ready to join the Twisted Disney crew. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel to show your support. Follow us on Instagram and come on over to Patreon where you can tip us for $2 a month so Numi can feed her cats. See you next time.